So we're doing another train show this week, the Great Train Show. <laughs> right, I've never heard of this one before. It was originally called the Great American Train Show, and it travels all over the country, but they bought up other shows, uh, most notably Greenberg's Toy and Train Show, and now they're, they're mostly regional. They have about five different shows that, that they run in different regions, but the Great Train Show is what's left of the Great American Train Show, which is a national show. Oh! So we haven't seen them because they only come to town about every, I don't know, five to ten years, yes. something like that. Wow. Same place. Same idea. Same, yeah. Really close. Really, really close. <laughs> I think the funnest thing about these national shows is the dealers. Yes. There's the, the usual train show stuff, but boy, you run into dealers that you typically don't see. No. And a lot of, therefore, products that you don't see. Look at the treasure. Oh, I know. I wanted to get down there and go through everything. We did, do. Yes, just about <laughs> now, everything. Check out what's going on down here. Jim Wandless has found a whole bunch of blue box Atherin cars. Holy cow. He's buying them out. Oh. <laughs> Must be some real treasure. And this is the wonderful world of trains up in Ogden. Well, we've got to get up there. The title just sounds intriguing. Yeah, we've heard good news about them, but for some reason we've just never been up there. Well, Ogden's like really far away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's right out there with Tooele. <laughs> This is always great to see these wooden handmade trains and toys. I, I just love it. Well, it's a long-standing tradition, the homemade toy. Absolutely. And I just love to see these when they pop up at the train shows and, well, we've got something of a collection ourselves. Right. These things are just rugged and meant to be played with, but you can also have them out on display. Aren't they whimsical? I think they're just a great piece of, of uh, folk art in a way. Yes. Just a tremendous amount of fun. I love seeing this. And this wasn't something that you normally see, but uh, a fabric store, all train-themed fabrics. Well, and I just about went nuts here because I've been looking for some train-themed fabric, and you don't see that at Walmart. No, it's actually quite hard to find, and to find somebody with an entire collection, and also uh, digital prints. Right. It's so good to be home, yes. <laughs> Look at that sparkly, that's just really pretty. That's But a lot of these dealers were just great big huge dealers that travel around from train show to train show. So while it's sort of like just going to your local hobby shop, it's also completely different because, uh, well, you just never know what treasure you're going to find here. Oh, and they had some neat ones. Boy, didn't they just. <laughs> and, of course, antiques, especially China. Well, the dishes are so interesting. They're just, sometimes they're just one of a kind. Yeah, and I could, I could see collecting these. I, I just... I don't know if we need to start a whole other thing. Maybe. <laughs> well, this is fun. This is Little Town in Plastics. Uh, that was kind of a, a rip-off, if you will, of the Plasticville trains from the 1950s. A company started up that tried to look just like them. Right, and if it was more economical, I bet there was a lot of layouts built. Well, I'll tell you, and, and in, in the collector's market, it seems like these... Uh, these, uh, what would you call them, a clones? Knock off knock off. Yeah. yeah, they they're... end up being more valuable than the actual uh, item was. Yeah, way more valuable. <laughs> oh, and these lifelike guns, I built them all back in the day. Uh, they were like $2, now they're more like $60. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everything becomes collectible. Oh, and Foss scale. Jason Jensen, who has uh, Jason Jensen trains here on YouTube, 
uh, has built almost his entire layout out of Foz scale structures. Oh, fun. That would be neat. And oh man, what a neat. He's got this waterfront. Uh, and I think now he's released his own line of kits, but uh, so much of what he's built there is all Foz scale wood kits. And then upstairs, it was mostly train layouts. Right. There were a few other things up here. Here's Lego again. With the front runner train layouts. <laughs> <laughs> I just get the biggest kick out of it. This is probably the, the fastest expanding part of the hobby is Lego. And uh, whatever, you know, whatever, especially if it gets kids involved, we all started up with American Flyer and Lionel, and a lot of people just continue to do American Flyer and Lionel. So when I see kids doing Lego, it's like, well, of course. <laughs> right, and I never knew about Legos until my brother got them, and of course my dad promptly stepped on one of them, <laughs> but that was my early experience. Well, it's really become quite an international sensation. Uh, trains, train layouts built from Lego. But I applaud any of these things that get kids excited about building model railroads. So any of these toys, right. they're just really, really fun, and I just love to see kids getting excited about them. Oh, absolutely. But all of that just becomes sort of a gateway to the the more expensive modeling, if you will. Right, when you start out, it's always better to start with something a little cheaper, just to see if you like the hobby. And of course, once you like the hobby, oh boy. Yeah, and then, gee, sky's the limit. Uh-huh. Oh, check this out. This, this is my favorite thing. Yeah, now talk about toys, and if you wanted to have the sky's the limit. Can we put this <laughs> in the backyard? They had one of these at Lagoon years ago. Oh, they did? And it was my favorite thing at Lagoon. They had a four-track main, and these little, they, they pumped just like this with the hand car. They were a little narrower in gauge, but they had, I'm guessing, 150 to 200 yards of track. Wow. And, and because it was four tracks wide, you could race your friends. Well, that's fun. I just would hope it's easy like to turn the handle because pulling my bulk around, <laughs> I might need a bigger handle. Well, I was ready to sit down on one of these, but I knew if I did, I'd never be able to get back up. We'd be calling 911. Well, me, I'd just sit there on the track and look silly. But I, some of my fondest memories are pumping one of these things around at Lagoon and getting Getting going so fast that going through the turns, I'd literally lay the thing out on its side and I'd go tumbling out into the gravel. Oh, goodness. But as a kid, you know. That's fun. You're durable. and <laughs> That's right. And as an adult, it's a 911 call. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, the ride operator comes over yeah. and gives you, you know. Wait, you know what are you doing? What in the world are you doing? Keep it on the track. Mm-hmm. And this is something that just travels with the show. What a great way to engage the really little kids. Right, I love to see the interactive and hands-on experience these little guys are getting. It'd be fun if our local NMRA group added this to their show, because it wouldn't cost that much. Oh no, and it's such a wonderful thing because they get to manipulate the toys and put things together and create a plan so that the train goes on the tracks. This is the Ofer Tintic and Western Club. They were here with two of their modular railroads, one in HO and one in N. Right. Because they do both scales. Oh, and they're one of my favorite groups. This is, yeah, both of these railroads are just mm -hmm. really first class. Right. I've got some other 
ones that I put together that is, um, they're made out of metal. Yeah, metal earth, yeah. Yeah, they're hard to put together. I really like how they have this mobile home park displayed. All of these older mobile homes, trailers if you will, it sure symbolizes a time in America when people use these as houses and move their house with them to the next construction site. This is Ulfur Tintic and Western's end scale railroad. This one was really neat. It runs so smoothly. That was my, my only complaint about end scale back when I was doing end scale. Modern end scale is a whole different thing. It sure is. These things just run like little tiny Swiss watches. Nice. Only they're more interesting. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, th I think. One of the cool things about N-Scale is they've historically done a lot of very limited edition and commemorative cars. Right. And look at this one, uh, the N-Track Club. <laughs> this is, uh, they gave their Pioneer Award to uh, Jim Fitzgerald, oh. who founded that club. Neat. And really before that, modular railroading was just almost unheard of and he put that on the map by forming N-Track. So all these modular railroads really, to a large extent, owe their existence to Jim Fitzgerald. Well, here. that's cool. So I just loved seeing him represented here on that core. And here are our friends at the Utah Train Collectors. Right. <laughs> uh, something that's just neat here, this is, I guess they call it uh, high rail, O scale. So it's, it's three rail like Lionel, but they try to do a much more realistic approach to it. I see. And all these models of, of uh, 844 and Challenger. Look at this this Northern here. Is that amazing? That's or what? really neat. I just love this stuff. Yeah, we're going. 
And this is the Colorado and Great Western Modular Railroad Club, and they're actually out of Winchester, Colorado. Oh, wow. And we've seen them at train shows before, but we don't often get a chance to see them because they don't usually come into Utah, being a Colorado club, but it was just fun to see them travel that far and bring their railroad. Right. I'm pretty sure that the Great Western that they're referring to here is the Great Western Sugar Railroad. Oh, really? Yeah, that operated in that same region around Winchester, Colorado. And what a really neat railroad. And it uh, continued operating steam all the way into the 1960s. Wow. Well, this has been an enormous amount of fun. It was fun to get out and see this one. And if you enjoyed it, you might consider hitting the like button. Yes. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. It really helps everyone out, including yourself, because then you will be notified when we upload a video. Right. And the easy way to become a subscriber is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some Tuesday foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you then. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.